Hey, Ben here. It's me. Hope that's you. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about remote hot tub selling. I uh, got my notes here. Hope you don't mind if I use them so I don't forget anything. Got my tea. Uh, I'm ready to go. So I think remote hot tub selling is going to be really important. We're about to enter a really hot time for hot tub sales and uh, we want to make the most of it. And, uh, and just like there are hot times, there's also cold times. And I know that there's slow times coming too. And uh, no matter which one you're in, uh, I think uh, what I'm about to talk to you about is going to be important uh, for years going forward. And uh, whether it's a slow time or a fast time, uh, you want to be prepared to make the most of it so that you can uh, capitalize when things are good and um, you know hedge the downside when things are bad. So that's kind of what, what I'm into. So let's, uh, let's jump into this a little bit. Um, so we're going to talk about hot tub pre-selling. Uh, this is the process I've been using and developed over the last couple of years to sell hot tubs in 15 minutes using a few back and forth emails. Now, there's a little bit of exaggeration going on there. I totally get it, uh, but it's not unreasonable. I have sold hot tubs with very little effort and very little work, and I'm sure you've had some lay down sales too. Um, but what I'm working on is getting those to be more consistently happening and to require less and less in-person selling from me. So that's that's one thing I've been very strongly working on since uh, since I started in the hot tub business. Uh, so we all know people in this industry. Um, you're you might be better connected than I am uh, because I've only been in it for a couple years. I'll admit it. But uh, and so I know I know some people, uh, but you probably know more. And if you think this is interesting, what I'm working on, if you think it's helpful, please share it. I would love to have you invite people to this group and send them the link for it because uh, I truly, truly want to make this industry better. Like that's my mission, right? We all know those people in our industry that are shady. They have bad sales practices. They sell junk um, and they give our industry a bad name and or they're pushy salespeople, uh, pressuring people using, you know, slimy, uh, manipulative tactics to get people to buy. And, and I'm not against salesmanship I'm and salespersonship. I'm, I'm all about it, right? But I think there's a point where uh, you can mislead people, you can lie to people, you can trash the competition to get a sale. Uh, I don't believe in any of that. And so if you think this is interesting, please share it with your contacts, people you know, friends, uh, you know, uh, in your dealer network, whatever. I mean, I'm happy to show this to people. I... I don't have a lot of secrets. In fact, I don't even mind if my competitors spy on my stuff. Like you can spy on my stuff too, but you're probably not going to reverse engineer it to start with uh, because there's a lot going on below the surface. So you can copy the ads I use. You can copy the words I use in my ads. That's probably not going to get you very far because there's a lot going on under the surface that you probably don't uh, realize right off the bat. And uh, I also don't mind showing this stuff because uh, I'm always working on the next thing, <laughs> right? So even if my competitors uh, see this and follow what I do, I'm already working on the next thing. I'm innovating something else. So the chances that they're going to catch up are pretty slim. And I think if you do some of this stuff, the chances that your competitors are going to catch you are going to be pretty slim too. So you may have seen me in Spa Retailer. Aqua Magazine, Pool and Spa Marketing. If not, that's totally cool. Um, I've been featured in all of them. Been on the Spa Retailer podcast a couple times and also in the magazine. Um, I've been in Aqua Magazine, Pool and Spa Marketing Magazine, talking about some of this stuff, but other things involved in the sales process as well and digital marketing and things like that. Um, so some of the stuff I'm going to show you in the next couple weeks over a few different videos, uh, this is just the first one, uh, is going to be uh, stuff that, people have paid me thousands of dollars to teach them or to show them or to do for them. And so, you know, I, if you don't know about me, um, just yet, my name is Ben. I own a pool and hot tub store in Manitoba, Canada, uh, along with, um, my business partners, one of whom is my wife. And, uh, and we bought this business a couple years ago and I come from a digital marketing background. So, uh, and not just digital, but any kind of marketing, right? Like I love the sales process. I love marketing, advertising, all that kind of cool stuff. That's, it's like a, 
it's always like a nice puzzle for me to figure out. And that's what I really love spending my time doing is figuring out these puzzles. And so um, d buying this hot tub business was really just another puzzle for me to solve. And so I have a digital agency on the other side. And so people uh, pay me to consult with them, to show them this stuff, to teach them this stuff, to do some of it for them. So um, that's, that's kind of where I come from. And so I really wanted to tackle the challenge of the high ticket hot tub sales. And I think, um, I think I've got some pretty good stuff so far. I don't, I don't know everything. And, and the, the beauty of this kind of stuff is that we all have our own way of doing it. And so I'm never not gonna come in here and tell you, this, tell you that my way is superior. Although if you have a nagging feeling that there's something that you're missing or something that you're not doing that you could be, um, then you gotta be open to other ideas, right? And so uh, here's just one, one method. So let me just jump back in here. So what we're gonna get done? Well, here's what I've been working on. I wanna make the most of the good times and hedge my downside on the in the bad times because there's always a recession coming and there's always a, like a boom coming, right? And so we wanna be able to uh, have steady, even sales throughout it. And I don't want to ride the tide of the economy. I don't want to ride the tide of popular opinion. I don't want to be subject to these weather patterns that I have no control over, right? I want to be in control of our marketing and sales process so that no matter what, we're going to make sales. And when this pandemic hit, I really um, was glad that I had been working on this remote hot tub sales thing to begin with. Um, the other thing I've really been working on from day one is that I never want to be working in my own business 24-7. I just don't. Like, I don't want to be spending all my time in the store selling. I just don't. And maybe you do, and that's totally fine. If you want to spend eight hours a day pitching people on hot tubs, by all means, if that's working for you, I'm all about it. But that's just not my life. That's not my lifestyle. Um, I have other things to do, other things to work on. I have my agency to run. I have my kids to take care of. I pride myself on spending a lot of time with my kids. And so um, what I really want is a system that I can teach to just about anyone. And I'm not 100% there yet, but um, what I want is to be able to take any kid off the street and be able to show them this process and they'll be able to sell a hot tub. And we've kind of done that. We've got a uh, 23-year-old guy. He's um, got no real sales experience. Um, he was an actor by trade. Cool guy. Love him. Uh, but he really did not know how to sell. So I gave him the scripts, I gave him the process, and he's been making hot tip sales pretty consistently. And uh, I think he's only gonna get better. So I have kind of proof of concept here. So uh, that's, that's my goal as well, right? And so that's what we're gonna get done here too, is try and come up with a process that we can show to anybody so that we can do the high value work in our own business. So I mentioned in one of my posts, the McDonaldizing the, the process. And I'm not a huge fan of McDonald's. I actually don't really like McDonald's that much, but uh, I have to admire that they can take any pimply faced teenager off the street, show them a few simple things, and they're able to handle the business, <laughs> right? So that the owner isn't the one flipping burgers and the franchise owner isn't the one taking all the orders and all that kind of stuff. Like you wanna be able to have other people do that for you in a clear way that's consistent every time so that you're able to get consistent results. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is really, um, be future proofing our business. And I think the future is maybe not where people think it is. And what I mean by that is uh, there's a lot of emphasis from digital marketing people on in, uh, automation, um, technology, uh, trying to be hands off in the process. And I think there's some merit to that. We always want to automate where we can. But at the same time, I've, I've been noticing this in the digital marketing world because I've been doing this day in and day out for years now, is that the pendulum's starting to swing in the other direction. Whereas uh, a few years ago, people didn't really want to talk to anybody. If they could find a way to solve their problem without having to talk to somebody, then, uh, then they would do it, right? And so there's this huge swing towards automating everything. But now people are getting a little bit frustrated with that process, especially with something like hot tubs that are ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, maybe even more. They wanna have a conversation with somebody. They wanna talk to somebody. And so um, we kind of have to marry the two, right? Like how much can we automate and how much can we uh, be involved in the process without bogging ourselves down? And so I think uh, a lot of car brands have done this very well, this pre-selling stuff, so that by the time you talk to somebody who's in car sales now, um, people got tired of talking to car salespeople, um, but then now they don't really want to 100% do it online, but they want to be most of the way there online. And then when they finally get to talk to somebody, they have all their questions mapped out. They just need a few things answered. 
and then they're comfortable making a decision. So cars have done this really well because you can go online, you can pick your car, you can have it all built out, you can know, uh, uh, you can research and you can know about cars before you talk to somebody so that when you finally do, um, then really it's just a short, short hop to making a sale. And so that's what I'm trying to do in the hot tub business. And I think we're, we're getting there for sure. So um, what it's all about is making sure that people have the information they need to make a good decision. And so the goal here is for us as reputable, quality hot tub dealers to control that process. Not just in a manipulative way, but in a way that's going to help people make the right decision. And if you truly believe in your product, if you truly believe that you sell the best, then, then you have to help people make that good decision. And so how do we do that? That's what we're going to be talking about in this group for the next little bit. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already intuitively know. So I don't have some mind-blowing technology to give you. I'm not a super tech-savvy guy. As you can see, I'm like not super fancy. This PowerPoint is like pretty basic. And that's how I talk to people. And like what you see is what you get with me. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not going to show you anything mind-blowing that's going to like, um, you know, disrupt the whole industry because I have some new app or something or some new automation software or anything like that. Um, I, I want to do things as low tech as possible because that's more reliable in a lot of ways. Um, as soon as you introduce more and more technology to something, the less reliable it gets in a lot of cases. And I want to be able to show this to anyone, whether they're tech savvy or not, and have them get it. So that's kind of what we're, what we're talking about here. But I'm probably going to go against what you've been told. Just a little bit. So a lot of us have had our conferences recently. Um, you know, our hot tub conferences uh, from your dealers or, or whatever. Um, there's, you know, events and things like that. And more and more, you probably notice there's always a digital marketing component to it. And uh, I don't know about you. I'm not saying those folks are wrong who did any of the presentations in those things. I've seen some of them. I haven't seen all of them, so I don't know all the content of it. But if something didn't feel right about it to you, uh, you're not alone there. So a lot of the information was very technical sometimes. Here's all the million different platforms you should be posting on. Here's the time of day you should be posting them and all that kind of stuff. It's overwhelming, right? Uh, it's just, it's way too technical. It's not strategic. Or it's, uh, it's all about automation. Like here's how you, here's how to, you know, automate this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then of course, it's always some vendor that's leading you to buying their solution, right? And I'll be honest with you, like at the end of these trainings that I'm going to do, um, I'm probably going to make an offer to some of you to work with you because um, I actually can help with this stuff. But uh, I'm also just happy to teach it, to be honest with you. So um <laughs> if you do like what's what's going on here, please let me know. Um, you can shoot me an email, s comment on Facebook post, whatever. Just let me know you're into it so that I know that I can keep doing it. I'm on the right track. Otherwise, I can go back to, to other stuff. But um, anyway, uh, a lot of it is just automated technical stuff. And if that didn't sit right with you, if it didn't feel right to you, if it didn't uh, follow uh, the principles of what you've been building for years and years in your own business, then, then you're not alone. And I can show you another way. If you want to go that route, totally fine. It does work, but it can be a lot for some people. It's like drinking from the fire hose. And often it's not required. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to bust a couple of assumptions here. And that's what this video is about. So I am going to get to the, uh, the meat of you know, how to do all this stuff later. But right now, we're just really setting the groundwork. And there might be a couple of things, that uh, uh, concepts I need to introduce to you for all of it to make sense later. So assumption number one, uh, we're about to have a great year for hot tub sales. And uh, I think the question, whether you're asking it consciously or subconsciously, is how can I do more? Like how can I how can I do more with what I've got right like how can I uh, get more leads get more sales sell more hot tubs get more pitches all that kind of stuff more leads more advertising more people walking in the door now those are all good things to work on but there are diminishing returns at a certain point because doing more has limits 
And this is the kind of one of the first assumptions I need to bust is that to sell more, you need to do more. Um, but doing more has upper limits, uh, a profitability, right? Um, you can't spend more money on ads indefinitely, right? I mean, and, and there's a lot of digital marketing folks out there that will, uh, that don't really get this. And I think if you've talked to any of them, you'll understand that they don't really understand that there's a limit to the cost you can put out per sale, right? Like you can't, you can't keep spending and spending and spending uh, to only get a few sales. You have to, you have to get some results and it has to be scalable. But most digital advertising is not scalable, especially not in a local market. So there's an upper limit to how much you can spend and be profitable. Now, um, I'm not the biggest hot tub dealer in, in my area. Um, there are people who spend a lot more, but um, I'm pretty sure that nobody spends less and gets more sales than we do. <laughs> so um, there's a limit to your profitability. You can't just keep spending and spending and spending on radio, TV, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Google, um, whatever. And you just can't keep spending and spending and, and expect to make the same cost per sale because that's going to eat into your margins big time if you keep trying to do more th that way. Uh, there's limits on your time, right? You've only got so many hours in the day. I can't spend all day pitching people on hot tubs. I just, I just can't. And there's limits to to manpower. And I, I'm, I don't mean to be sexist about that. I don't really know what the equivalent is. Person, person power. I'm not sure. But um, you've only got so many staff, and you don't want to be hiring into a boom, right? You don't want to be hiring for busy time, because then as soon as those busy times are done, then you're stuck with all this staff and all this overhead you have to pay, right? So uh, you can't just keep scaling time indefinitely either. You've only got so many hours in the day personally and from your staff. So like that's, that's just not scalable. It, there's an upper limit to it. Social distancing, there's a limit to how many people you can have in your store. We can't have huge event sales, at least not where we are. We're not gonna have huge event sales the way we did in the past where we try to attract as many people as one at once as we can to the store or to a parking lot somewhere. Like that's just not, not something we can really do right now and and maybe we can in the future and that's awesome but i don't want to rely on that i don't want that to be a major source of income for me for the year i want to be able to sell consistently throughout the year and so there's a limit to how many people you can have in your store if depending on where you are and spacing and all that that you can't really have a lot of people in the store at once so we want to limit people coming into the store while still making more sales so we have to be careful of these upper limits so doing more in and of itself just isn't going to be enough right you spend an hour pitching someone in person, um, you know, that's 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 great if you sell them, but if they walk out the door, that's an hour gone, right? And, and maybe that's an hour invested into making the sale later, fair enough, but uh, if you keep doing that all day, uh, there's an upper limit to that. So instead of asking, how can I do more? Yeah, can't pitch all day. Instead of asking, how can I do more? I've replaced that question in my mind with how can I do less and get the same result or better? Now, <laughs> I'm going to let that sink in for a sec. How can I do less and get the same result or better? Now, that is a question that I find interesting because you can't keep doing more and more and more, but you can do less. <laughs> Now, I guess there's a technically a lower limit to that because you could die, but uh, and that would be doing the least amount possible, but you could leave a legacy of having other people learn this and do it. So, I mean, if the you can always do less. And what I want to do is how can I pare back? How can I chop away pieces of the sales process that we've been used to and still get the same results or better? Because what that does is it creates space. Doing less creates space because now you've freed up all of those things from before. So by doing less, less advertising, you're freeing up profitability. By doing less, you're freeing up your own time. By, by doing less, you're freeing up your staff's time so they can be working on other things too or doing it more efficiently. Or maybe you don't need as much staff and you're – you're not having as many people in the store. So what you're doing is you're creating space with that. Now, to be honest with you, I'm going to be totally transparent here. I am not the most voluminous dealer in our area. What I mean by that is we don't sell the most hot tubs in our area. That's what I'm probably shooting for one day. Um, but the volume comes at a cost too, right? Um, 
volume might not always be profitable. But what I'm working on is how can I do less with and get more? And so with that, I think, based on all of our competitors, one day we might have the most volume of hot tub sales. And a lot of people watching this are probably selling more than I do. But I am confident in this. I am confident that nobody has sold more with less effort than we have. <laughs> I don't think anybody has done more with less. I mean, maybe that's a grand statement to make. I don't know. I haven't talked to every single person in the industry. But um, we don't take a lot of time to sell. And yet we're selling quite profitably and have been for a while and will continue to do so for years to come. And I'm, I'm quite confident in that. But you see how doing less creates space now? If you can get the same result or better. And the less you have to do, the less you have to teach someone else. <laughs> and that is a really important point, I think. Because when you do less, it's less moving parts to pass on to somebody else. So I mentioned our guy earlier. Um, he was an actor, and when the pandemic hit, he uh, ran out of acting work because they just couldn't have live people in theaters or doing you know, traveling shows or anything like that. So he came to work for us. And um, within a few weeks, uh, he was already pitching and selling hot tubs. And I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm just saying because I have really focused on doing more with less, that now I don't have to teach all of this other stuff. So a lot of people pride themselves on their technical expertise, but I'm here to tell you that technical expertise is not something that you can pass on easily. It takes years for someone to get the experience that you have. So to be able to, if you, if you take all of your selling process and put it on technical expertise and knowing more than your competition, you're never going to win that fight. You're never going to beat your competition by knowing more than them because there's always going to be somebody who can sell more with less knowledge. How many times have you seen people more successful than you or more successful than someone you know is really good, um, but they don't know as much because that it, those two things are independent. There's not a lot of correlation between knowing more and income. Um, they, they can correlate, but not necessarily. It doesn't always work that way. Uh, one example I hear a lot about is Dr. Phil, right? Dr. Phil is not... He's not even a licensed doctor in most places, but um, I don't even think he has his license anymore. But um, he's wildly popular. He's made millions and millions of dollars. Uh, he's one of the most famous you know, TV personalities. And yet there are counselors and uh, you know <laughs> people like that, coaches and counselors and whatever, who are just so angry at him because – he doesn't know anything, this guy. We know so much. We've been to school. We've got all this training. We've got all this expertise. And yet he's there making all this money on TV. And here we are struggling when we are the best at what we do. So being the best at what you do is awesome. I think it's something to strive for, but it does not mean more sales. So I don't want to hang up my sales process on knowledge. I think you need to have some knowledge, but only enough to get people on board because most prospects walk in the door and know nothing. And so even if you give them a little bit, a little bit is a lot. So that's why I want to be able to pass on our sales process to anybody. And they can get it and do it and implement it and start making sales. Because really, I don't care if my guy knows the most about hot tubs. What I want to know is, can he give people enough information that they can make a good decision. And I think we're, we're almost there. So I think we're set up to sell a ton this year. And I don't want to have to burn myself out to do it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to burn out myself to have the best year ever. I want to do it easily. <laughs> That's just me. So all this comes back to pitches. Let me come back here. This all comes back to pitches. How can I make fewer pitches and make more sales? That's the question I'm trying to answer with this group. Just checking my notes here. Bear with me. So we're taking a less is more approach here. So here's why it's important. What can you do with that space? 
Well, what you can do with that space is you can make more offers. You can make better offers. You can work on strategy of the business. You can work on partnerships with other businesses that serve the same market as you do. Luxury car dealerships. That's one I'm working on. Electricians, deck builders, carpenters, concrete people. Form partnerships with them. Once you have this space, you can start working on other things, other higher leverage activities that a business owner or someone in a management position should be doing. Not pitching all day. And that's really important to me. I know I made a joke about this in one of my posts, but watching wrestling in your underwear, right? <laughs> like I pitch hot tubs on the couch with my phone while I'm watching wrestling in my underwear. <laughs> uh, if that's what you want to do, great. If not, fine with me. But you can do what you want with the extra time you've got. So why is this important? Well, I, I kept the math deliberately stupid because I just want it to be easy to understand. So if we're going to say a hot tub's $10,000. Could be more, could be less. We all know that. But I'm just making the math simple. So if it takes you one hour in person to pitch a hot tub to somebody and have them buy, that is a $10,000 per hour activity in a sense, right? So, uh, you know, obviously, again, the math is dumb. So, but if it takes you an hour to make one sale for $10,000, that's a $10,000 per hour activity. If you can get that in-person pitching time, time down to 30 minutes, so you can make 30 minutes for one sale. So if someone comes in and you can talk to them for 30 minutes and make a sale, that's a $20,000 per hour activity. Now, obviously, not all your hours are spent doing that. So it's not like you're making, you know, what you know, millions and millions, but um, but that that is what it is. That's high leverage time for you. And if you can get that down to 15 minutes in person, so if you can get people mostly sold before they even come in, if you can spend 15 minutes for that person, and make one sale. That 15 minutes is a forty thousand dollar activity, because 15 times four is one hour, right? So now we're we've instantly changed a ten thousand dollar an activity into a forty thousand dollar an hour activity. Uh, by cutting down this in-person selling time. So how do we do that? Well, that's, what, that's where pre-selling comes in. So that's what we're going to be talking about. How do we get that sale time down? How do we get that um, one hour that you might be doing down to the 15 minutes? So that each minute you're spending selling is worth infinitely, not infinitely, four times as much to you. So that's where pre-selling comes in. And the beauty of pre-selling is a few things. So you can, with this one hour selling in person, you don't necessarily get to choose when that hour is, <laughs> unless you've made an appointment with somebody, which is fine. You can make appointments with people, but you have to work on their schedule and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't necessarily get to choose when that hour is. With pre-selling, you get to choose when you do it. You can choose where you do it. I made a joke about watching wrestling in my underwear after my kids have gone to bed. Um, that's when I do a lot of pre-selling. You can do pre-selling first thing in the morning, last thing at night, whenever you want to. And you can choose where you do it. At home, on the toilet, in line at the grocery store, uh, waiting in the car for your kids to come out of school, whatever. And you can choose the context. You can choose how you pitch. So one of the things that really bugged me when I first started doing this stuff is, you know, I'd be in the store and someone would walk in and just like that, I'd have to be on, right? You got to be on, turn it on. Uh, and some people can do that. And some days I honestly just don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like pitching. Uh, and so, <laughs> you know, you've got to be on for that hour and you've also got to be a prepared for any questions. You got to be um, dialed in on your offers, you got to be dialed in on your pricing, you got to be dialed in on all the objections people are going to have, all that kind of stuff. And that kind of bugged me. I mean, I, it's a necessary part of sales for sure. But again, how can I cut down on that stuff? That's what I wanted to know. How can I cut down on those things so that um, I can choose when and where this happens and I can control the process a little better and the context of the sale so that when someone walks in, I already kind of know who they are. I know what tubs they're interested in. I know some of the questions and concerns they've already had, and I've already addressed them. 
and now I just need to help them make that final decision. That's what I'm going for. I can control that. I can work with that. I can do that all day, every day. Some days I don't just, I don't feel like going through the grind. I don't know about you. That's just me. Assumption number two. How can I make sales faster? So the f assumption number one was how can I do more? Assumption number two is how can I make sales faster? That's, that's the other question people are often asking. They want to cut down that time between someone shows interest and when they make the sale. And I'm always trying to do that too. So that's not like I'm not working on that. But it is an assumption and it's often a, f a false one or you were looking at the wrong thing. We're not looking at the right thing. And here's why. Speed has limits too. There are a lot of limits to trying to make sales faster. You can shortcut the information you give people. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. You can try to get people on a phone call as quickly as possible. Not everybody's ready for that. You can try and rush them to come into the store. Depending on how the pandemic stuff is in your situation, people may not want to come into the store or uh, they may not be ready for that, that, that pitch yet. So you can't rush human behavior. You just can't because speed relies on human behavior. So if this was a machine, you can always make the machine faster. But when we're dealing with people here, real prospects with real lives and families and human beings with head trash, they've got assumptions of their own that they need busting. They've got a buying process to go through. You can't always rush that. You can't force it to be faster. And sometimes we want it to be faster, but we can't make it faster. So I'm going to come back to that in a sec. But my philosophy right now, and I'm wrapping up here, so we're going to be we're going to be done soon. But I think it's really important uh, that we talk about this. Speed is going to happen without me. So if someone's ready to buy a hot tub this week. There's not necessarily a lot I can do to make that happen. It's going to happen with or without me. Because people are going to do what they're going to do. But what do I want to do? I want to be there when people are ready. And I want to be the first one they think of when they are ready. That's my goal. Not to make them be ready any faster. Because that's going to happen with or without me. Because speed has limits too. Because you can't rush human beings sometimes. So my philosophy in our business, and this is, this is probably going to drive my business partner, one of my business partners crazy. Uh, Thomas, you might be watching this. I don't know, but um, it might drive him crazy. But I don't care if I make a sale today. If someone comes as a lead through our pipeline, it would be awesome if they bought a hot tub today. But that's not necessarily my goal. My goal is to get them to buy a hot tub from me in the next two years. I don't care if it takes two years for somebody to buy a hot tub. I'm starting that process today. And every prospect that comes your way is going to be at a different point in the process. Some are going to be on the sidewalk, just walking along. And they're going to walk. And however long it takes them to get there, let's say it takes someone... 10 miles to get to, to buying a hot tub, if we're putting a distance on it. They're going to walk that 10 miles. Eventually, they're going to get there. But you can't control how fast they're walking. But you want to be there at the end of the 10 miles for them. Other people are going to be in the slow lane. They're driving in the slow lane. Or maybe they're on a bike, and they're cruising along in the slow lane. They're faster than the walking, but they're going to take a bit to get there. And that's okay. Because I'm going to be there at the end of the 10 miles there too. And there's other people that are in the fast lane. They're zipping along the freeway. And they're going to get to that 10 miles a lot quicker. And that's okay. Because I'm going to be there at the end of the 10 miles too. So no matter how fast someone is going through the buying process, I'm going to be there every step of the way. And I'm going to be there at the end of the 10 miles when they're ready to buy a hot tub. That's what I'm working on. So I'm I think what differentiates me from a lot of people, a lot of the ads I've seen out there, 
People are trying to get a sale right now. They're advertising hot tubs. Here's a hot tub for sale. Here's a big sale we got going on. You gotta buy now or you're gonna miss out on this financing deal. These are the most tubs and the cheapest tubs we're gonna have for this year, blah, blah, blah. This is the time to get it. Now there definitely is a time and place for urgency. I do believe in making offers like that, absolutely. But that cannot be the core of our marketing process because that will come and go. There are gonna be peaks and valleys there but there are never gonna be peaks and valleys for people interested in buying a hot tub. And that's who I wanna get after. I wanna get after people who are interested in buying a hot tub. So instead of asking, how can I make sales faster? I'm replacing that with, how can I be there when people are ready? That's what matters to me. I wanna be the preeminent number one pe person people think of when they're ready to buy their hot tub. That's what we're trying to do here. And just like doing less create space, letting people take longer create space, you're giving them the freedom to make a smart choice on their own, but you're, you're subtly controlling that process. And that creates space too. It lets you have way more leverage because you're not chasing down every lead as if they're buying today. You do want to follow up with them quickly. Speed to lead is really important but this stuff does take time. There's a long buying process for hot tubs. We know that. Some people can take months and I just wanna be there for them along that way. That creates space too, because now you have, you're have you elongating the process a little bit in some cases. Some people are gonna shorten the process, some people are gonna elongate the process and you can't run them through the same thing. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna be missing out on most of your revenue. So letting people take longer create space because now, here's a really cool thing, one person can handle hundreds of leads at a time with what I'm gonna show you in the next video. One person can handle hundreds of leads at a time instead of one person making one pitch to one other person for one hour, right? We're leveraging our time here. So why is this important? Very few people are ready to buy today. Many more are thinking about it. And that's kind of what I was just talking about. Uh, if you run all your ads for people who are ready to buy a hot tub today, you might get some sales, absolutely. But your cost per sale, your cost per sale is going to go like this. And your returns are going to go like this because your margins are going to get eaten up because there's only a very small, finite amount of people who are ready to buy a hot tub today. And that is who you and all of your competitors are going after as well. It's people who are ready to go right now. I honestly believe you should go after those people. But we also want to be going after the people who are thinking about it. People who are considering a hot tub, but maybe not quite at the point where they're shopping around and ready to buy. We're getting them early in the process. We're swimming upstream. So just to kind of recap, we're replacing more faster. How can I do more? How can I make sales faster? With how can I do less and elongate the process? Less longer instead of more faster. Because what I'm doing is I'm building uh, a pool of people that are interested in buying a hot tub. And I'm stocking that pond constantly, constantly stocking that pond. So that every time, whether it's tomorrow, a month from now, a year from now, two years from now, every time I throw my line in that water, I'm gonna get something because I've been stocking that pond the whole time. That's what I'm doing. It's a long-term approach, not a fast-term approach. Here's your fun work. So I had a mentor of mine, he called it fun work. Whenever you would do videos like this, um, instead of giving homework, he gives fun work. <laughs> this is an easy one. Your fun work for today is let me know if you found this interesting. Do you find this valuable? Is this something you wanna know more about? Um, you can drop a comment, you can send me a message, you can email me um, if you've got my email address, if you've been talking before. Just let me know if you think it's good. Please share it with other people. Uh, and, and partly it's for my own ego. I've got a fragile ego. I want to know that, you know, I'm doing a good job and I'm helping people. But at the same time, uh, I got other stuff I can work on. I've got clients and for my agency that pay me a lot of money to do this stuff for them. I can go do that. I can go, I've got an inbox full of hot tub leads right now that I can respond to. And that's not a, not a joke. <laughs> I, I really do. Um, and so if you want me to, to, to keep going with this, I absolutely will. And if not, that's totally cool too doesn't matter to me if you're not into it but uh, if you are please let me know so that i can uh, i can keep doing this stuff so in video two i'm going to work on 
uh, selling people remotely. So we are going to get to that stuff. Um, but I think it's really important, like doing what we did today, um, to go over the concept of getting more out of less. How can we get more out of doing less and, and, and spending less time on it? That stuff is leverageable. Doing more is not leverage. So this is all the groundwork stuff, right? So this is all the con concept stuff. So um, if this isn't helpful to you and you don't care, you've got it all figured out, it's all good for me. So um, anyway, hope you have an awesome rest of your day. I think um, the next video is going to be really great because I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of uh, how we actually do this stuff and why and how it works. So hope you have an awesome day and uh, I'll talk to you later.